just what is the spiritual meaning of the five smooth stones of David in his battle with Goliath? This is part eight of the Giants in the Bible study. We've been working through a series on giants in the Bible. And giants in the Bible, they literally existed, but they have a symbolic meaning. They represent those that are proud, mighty adversaries or enemies of God's people that test our faith. We're right now looking at Goliath. He was six cubits in a span, some three meters or nine feet, nine inches tall. There are several other giants mentioned in the Bible, the Nephilim in the days before the flood, which is a type of the Great Tribulation, the Anakim giants in the Promised Land, notably Hebron, and the Rephium giants are Goliath and King Og. We've looked at those before. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right hand corner. And let's move on in the study. Before we move on in the study, we have to understand that the Bible is truth. Everything in the Bible is truthful. We see, for example, John 17, 17, sanctify them, set God's people apart, make them holy through thy truth. Jesus prayed this prayer, thy word is truth. The word of God is truth, and that's how Christians become sanctified or made holy. Jesus Christ is truth, John 14, 6, the Holy Spirit is truth. John 15, 26, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And when we interpret the Bible, which is highly symbolic, by the way, and it's completely spiritual, it's not a history lesson. It's not just for fun facts. To interpret the Bible, we compare spiritual with spiritual. And we know that Jesus' words are spirit and they are life because Jesus is the Word of God. It's by the Spirit of Christ that the Bible was written. We know that the Bible's written precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That's how we interpret the Bible. We go through the Bible. We compare Scripture with Scripture. The Scripture is spiritual. We compare spiritual with spiritual. The battle between David and Goliath is a beautiful spiritual picture of salvation, the defeat of Satan by Jesus Christ on the cross. The giant are symbolic of adversaries or enemies of God's people who are used to test their faith. Ultimately, Goliath is the symbol of Satan, our main enemy, and he's defeated by David, a type of Christ. We saw in a previous video how defiant and reproachful Goliath was of God, Jesus Christ, and his people. We saw in the last uh, video where Goliath hates, hates David because he's young which pointed to Jesus as the Son of God, the Lamb of God, ruddy, the blood of Christ that brings salvation, the beauty or the fair countenance of Jesus, which is the beauty of God and the glorious revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, but now in this video, we want to look at the five smooth stones. It's been a bit of a mystery among some about why David chose five stones, why are they smooth, and why was only one stone used to defeat Goliath? Let's look at the passages. 1 Samuel 17, verse 40. And he, David, took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook. And that brook there literally is river. And put them in a shepherd's bag. And he had even a script and his sling was in his hand. He drew near to the Philistine. And then a few verses later, we see David putting his hand in the bag took thence a stone, one of the stones, and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. Why his forehead? We're going to look at that in the next video. That the stone sunk into his forehead and fell upon his face to the earth. And then right after that, David ran and stood upon or on top of the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of the sheath, and slew him and cut off his head. So in the next video, we're going to look at this business about the forehead and the cutting off of uh, Goliath's head, but in this video, so you, you may want to subscribe, there's a little red button at the bottom right, right hand corner, but in this video we're going to focus in on the five smooth stones. Okay, first let's look at the stick though. David and his staff, which literally means stick, so he girded, David girded his sword upon his armor. Saul tried to give him his armor and that wouldn't work, and David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. Of course, because the battle is not by sword or armor. It's by the word of God. 
And David put them off and he took his staff. Instead, he took a staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones. So instead of armor and a sword, he had five smooth stones and a stick. That word staff there literally is a stick. That's all he had. And then the Philistines said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with staves, literally sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And we see here, of course, that the staff or the stick was the tool of a shepherd. David as a shepherd. Many places in the Old Testament it says that David was a shepherd. He was the youngest son of Jesse. He was out keeping the sheep, which of course is another reason that David is a type of Jesus Christ. And of course, Jesus Christ is the great shepherd. Let's look at the spiritual meaning of David's staff, that shepherd's staff, which is a stick. It's the Hebrew word mequel. This particular word is only used 18 times in the Old Testament. And we know that a shepherd's staff, a shepherd spiritually is a, it, it, it's a one that feeds the flock. And we know it's by the word of God that the flock is going to be fed. This word, as we look at Jeremiah 1 and Zechariah 11, Maquell points to the faithfulness of God's word. Note Jeremiah 1. The word of the Lord came into me saying, Jeremiah, the great prophet Jeremiah, the word of God comes to him. What do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see a rod, that's that Hebrew word Maquell, a stick, a rod of an almond tree. And God said, you have well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. It's pointing to the faithfulness of God's word will be completed, will be performed. Zechariah 11. This is, again, going back to the shepherd feeding the flock. And we know that the flock is fed with the word of God. I will feed the flock of slaughter, O poor of the flock. I took two staves or sticks. And again, that's that, that Greek word, mequel. One I call beauty, the other I call bands. I fed the flock. I fed the flock. I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it that I might break my covenant which I made. There's like the old covenant and there's a new covenant. The poor of the flock that waited upon me, the faithful flock, knew that it was the word of God. It's the shepherd's staff. It's the shepherd's stick. They knew. They recognized it was the word of God. If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver, which points to the Lord Jesus Christ and his passion, him being sold to the Jews for 30 pieces of silver. It's a beautiful picture. This word is used to represent the faithfulness of the shepherd's staff, the word of God. We see the symbolism of the hand. He, this staff, this McQuell was in his hand, his hand. And we recall a parallel passage, Jesus in the book of Revelation, the seven stars, the messengers to the seven churches in his right hand. I'll tag this slide with a video we've done out of the book of Revelation on his, the seven stars in his right hand. But the hand represents the control or the will of a person. Jesus, the seven stars, the messengers of the seven churches represent the word of God. And it's in the control. Just as the staff is in David's hand, the stars are in Jesus' hand. It's a parallel passage. Hand is to be under the will of another person. Psalm 106, I gave them into the hand of the heathen. In other words, given into the control of another person. They were brought into subjection under their hand. The hand is the will. Psalm 37, the wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand or under his will. And we see that the will of God, the will of Jesus Christ, the rod being in his, the staff being in his hand, points to salvation. And it's by God's right hand that we're saved. Psalm 44, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. David didn't take the sword of Saul. He took the shepherd's staff. He took the word of God. Neither did his own arm save it, but thy right hand. It's that staff. That faithfulness of the word of God in the hand of David. It's those seven stars, the messengers of the seven churches in the right hand of Jesus Christ. That's what brings salvation. Thine arm and the light of thy countenance because you had favor or grace unto them. Psalm 44 verse 3. Okay, the symbolism of the staff in the hand. So we see here, just as a review, Goliath, a type of Satan. David, a type of Jesus Christ. 
The staff is the faithfulness of God's word, Jeremiah 1. The hand is the will of Jesus Christ to defeat Satan on the cross to save his people. And we see that in Hebrews 2.14, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. He became a man, a young man, and so that through death he might destroy him that had the power of the death that is the devil. And that's what this, this, this battle, the intercessor's battle on David and Goliath is a symbol for destroying Goliath, destroying the Satan so he no longer has the power over death. It's the will of God for our salvation. But why in the world are there five smooth stones? Why not four? Why not nine? Why not some other number? Why not even just say, just say some smooth stones? Five, because five God uses. Nothing in the, in the Bible is void. He uses numbers symbolically. Five is the number of salvation. It's the number of judgment. Five wise virgins, the saved virgins, five foolish virgins. And we're going to have a video on the virgins coming up uh, pretty soon. So you might want to tune into that and subscribe to this channel. But ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. Salvation, judgment. Five thousand men fed with five loaves of bread. Points to salvation. The bread points to the word of God. The sheep on the right hand. The right hand has five fingers. The goats on the left. Five and five. That, that's pointing to salvation and judgment. The torment of the scorpions for five months. Revelation 9.10. And again, we've done a series on the whole book of Revelation that you may want to look at that, that playlist on our YouTube channel. But the five months represents judgment. 150 days. Five months of the flood. The waters covered the earth during the flood. Five months. 150 days. Again, the number five is used of salvation and it's used of judgment. And it, it corresponds that David, with those five smooth stones, on the one hand, he's going to save Israel. And on the other hand, is judgment on the Goliath, Satan, and the Philistines. Okay, so why in the world are these smooth stones? Wouldn't it be more effective to take a jagged stone? That wouldn't, wouldn't that hurt Goliath more and cause more damage, but rather he chose five smooth stones out of the brook or the river. When we look at this word smooth in the Hebrew, shalak, literally it means smooth. It actually, about 170 occurrence of the related words shalak and its various related cognates and things like that, 170 times, so it's used a lot in the Bible, this word. But most occurrences are translated in the sense to divide a portion. And in other words, you have something and you're going to give a portion to one person, a portion to another, and a portion to a third. That's how it's mostly used. We see, for example, Proverbs 16, 19. Better does it be a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide, and that's that same word shellac, divide the spoil with the proud. In other words, you you take a, a have a battle and you divide the spoil you divide what you've gotten from the battle and that's the way the words normally normally used joshua 18 joshua cast lots for them in shiloh before the lord and there joshua divided the land again that same word shalak divided the land unto the children of israel according to the divisions they went into the canaan and then they divided the land and that's that same word same word is used as smooth Joshua 18, 7, the Levites have no part. Again, that same word, shalak, for the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. So we see this word smooth. Most of the time it's translated as a lot or a portion. But we see what makes beautiful harmony with the five smooth smones. It also represents a portion of judgment. Job 31, for what portion, same Hebrew word shalak, what's the, the shalak or portion of God is there from above? What inheritance has the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked? That's the portion, destruction to the wicked, the strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. Job 27, this is the portion, the portion of a wicked man is judgment. Just like Goliath, his portion is judgment. The five represents either salvation or judgment. And the smooth represents judgment. 
This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. The portion, the Hebrew word shalak again. The increase of his house shall depart, and his good shall flow away in the day of his wrath. The day of wrath, the day of judgment. This, the day of wrath, is the portion of a wicked man from God. A wicked man receives judgment from God. That's his portion. That's what he that's his due. That's what he he his reward is. He gets judged according to his works. Okay, so we see that the smooth represents judgment, the five represents judgment, but it's one stone, one stone that does the work. He took a staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones out of the brook, and David put his hand in his bag, took a stone, slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead. One stone. Jesus Christ is the judge. The one stone is none other none other than Jesus Christ himself. This word stone is often used as Jesus Christ. He's represented by a big rock or boulder, but he's also represented as a stone that makes to stumble. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. And whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Jesus Christ is a stumbling stone. He looks like small and smooth and and but people stumble over him daniel 2 you saw a stone this is a small stone cut out without hands and this stone is going to represent jesus christ this is the great image and daniel 2 we've done a video on that i'll tag it on this slide a stone was cut out with hands which smote the image smote the image upon his feet and break them to peace the wind carried them away and the stone that smote the image, which it represents judgment, became a great mountain. That's the mountain of God. That's the kingdom of God for eternity. And we see again that stone is what does the judgment. One stone. Jesus Christ cut out without hands. He's the stumbling stone. A sling and a stone. Slings and stones. David used a sling to throw the stone at Goliath. It represents judgment. We see a parallel passage, Zechariah 9. The Lord shall be seen over them. His arrow shall go forth as lightning. This is describing judgment day again. The Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with the whirlwinds of the south. <clears throat> the Lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. Exact same Hebrew words as we find in 1 Samuel 17 with David and Goliath. A sling with the stone. The Lord God shall save them in that day, that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. Again, we see another parallel passage that a sling and a stone is used in judgment. Five stones out of the brook. That's where these five stones came from. And the word brook there, it literally is the Hebrew word river. It's usually translated as river. And a river in the Bible is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the river of the water of life. Revelation 21, I'll tag this slide. We've done a video on this passage in Revelation 21. It's a beautiful study on the Holy Spirit and the river of the water of life. We read, for example, Psalm 46. There is a river, the stream makes glad the city of God. And in Revelation, that river of water flows out of the, the city of God. Peace like a river, Isaiah 66, Isaiah 48. John 7, he that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which they believe on him should, not, should, on him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given. So we see a beautiful symbolic meaning of these stones that came out of the river. But why did they come out of the river? In the New Testament, we find that Jesus walked as a youthful man on this earth. He operated and he was anointed, anointed with the Holy Spirit. That's what the word Christ means, by the way. He was anointed. He's the anointed one, rubbed with oil. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. We, we see that he was baptized in the Jordan. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, was baptized of John and Jordan. That's a river. Again, the river represents the Holy Spirit straight away coming out of the water. He saw the heavens open and the Spirit, like a dove, the Holy Spirit descend upon him. There came a voice from heaven saying, you are my beloved son, that youthful, ruddy, 
beautiful symbolic David of the symbolism of Christ. And who am I well pleased? We see in Acts 10 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. The five smooth stones. Jesus is that, that one stone that went into Goliath's forehead. Came from the river. For, came from the river. The Holy Spirit. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. Went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. That's how he, that stone that, that, that went into Goliath's forehead, the battle of the minds, the battle of the will, and, and de Satan was defeated, for God was with him. God, Jesus Christ it came as a God-man, and again, Goliath is a type of Satan. Just a quick summary of the five smooth stones that come out of the brook. Goliath is the champion of the Philistines. He's the intercessor for them. He's, this, he's a symbol for Satan. He's an adversary. He's enemy of God's people. They meet in the middle. They meet in the valley. Jesus Christ is a symbol of David. Goliath despises God. He despises David, who's a symbol of Christ. He despises Israel. He's defiant. These five smooth stones come out of the river. Five is a symbolic number for both salvation of Israel, judgment on the Philistines, points to the defeat of Satan on the cross. Smooth, it's that judgment, it's that portion, that word smooth, Hebrew shalak, it's the portion that's given to the wicked. Those smooth stones, it's the portion that's given to them. The stone is Jesus Christ, it's the stone of stumbling. The brook or the river that the stones come out of we, re, remind us that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. He gets his power because he's anointed with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the God-man. It's a beautiful picture of salvation and judgment. We're going to move on. The next video is, is important. We're going to look at why the forehead. Why the forehead and why separately did David have to behead Goliath? We're going to look at that in the next video. Please consider subscribing to this channel, and thank you very much for watching this video.